it is gender neutral. The previous legislation um, referred to offenses, most of the sexual offenses being committed against women and girls. The present legislation speaks about the offenses being committed by one person against another person. So from that respect, it is gender neutral, which is as it should be. Actually, we are currently having a discussion regarding when the offender is also a minor boy, which we have had some of those scenarios, where you have a young victim, lady who is young girl who is probably 13, 14 years, a young boy who is about 15 years. It means he also cannot give consent. Um, is it fair to prefer a charge against him? What about her? Because if you have to think of both of them developmentally, they are along the same level. So this is um, an area of concern for us that we are looking at and we are discussing how to best treat to this particular type of cases. Interestingly, we got a slightly different perspective on the issue of gender neutrality and the Sexual Offenses Act of 1998 from attorney Alex Boyd Nights. One of the things that you can see the framers of the act went overboard to do was to be gender neutral. And contrary to the general belief held by the public, that the act does not make it an offense for female to female sexual contact. Section 14, subsection 4, does in fact make it an offense to have female to female sexual contact. And so that is much as an offense as male to male sexual contact, section 16. What is unusual is that with the way the, the, the um, de definition clauses are worded leaves you with the impression that the, as I said before the person who is introducing or the giver as they call it the, the other person to the sexual offenses the, 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 the act of burglary that person is held to a higher standard I don't know what you want to call it but it would appear that under the sexual offenses act the giver is made more culpable than the receiver and is under the Sexual Offenses Act is, has, stands to get a higher sentence than the receiver. It should be noted here that the Dominica Planned Parental Association, DPPA, may have been the only organization which tried to stimulate discussion and debate on the Sexual Offenses Act of 1998 prior to its passage into law. In December 1997, the DPPA organized a panel discussion on the proposed provisions of the Act, which resulted in a lively and participatory exercise. The Executive Director of the Dominica Planned Parenthood Association explains. The Government of Dominica invited the public to comment on the proposed Sexual, and um, sexual Offenses Act. And uh, we as an organization that's the Dominica Planned Parenthood Association as an organization that deals with sexual and reproductive health. We thought it would be a good idea to take the initiative to get the public um, reaction to the provisions of the Act. So we organized this forum and I thought it was um, quite uh, successful in the sense that we had quite a number of people attending the forum and we also had some professionals on the panel who were able to respond to some of their questions and comments. Um, several recommendations were made, and those were forwarded to the government. But uh, if I recall, I don't think any of those recommendations were incorporated in, in any revision of the Act. The main presenter was Mrs. Alex Boyd Knights, who says that... Some of the suggestions were that the panel and most of the audience thought that homosexual acts in private between consenting adults should be decriminalized. Many arguments were brought up in favor of decriminalization. Persons in the audience were surprised to learn that a husband and wife could not freely indulge in certain sexual practices of their choice, for example, anal sex, in the privacy of their own bedroom without the husband committing the crime of burglary and the wife that of gross indecency. So imagine this law enters the domain of the husband and wife. 
the panel felt and the audiences alike that there should be a provision making it an offense if a husband rapes his wife. However, the notion prevails in the act that a husband can never be guilty of raping his wife. And that was almost unanimously considered by the audience and panel alike to be totally untenable in 2000 and beyond. And audiences alike lamented the fact that no consideration had been given to persons having sex while knowing that they have a sexually transmitted disease. So that the situation where a person gives consent to sex with another person, believing that that other person is free from any sexually transmitted disease, and whereas that other person does in fact have AIDS or some other sexually transmitted disease, is a reality which should be provided for. Another thing that was not considered was date rape. Audience and panel alike felt that drugs such as Rohypnol and GBH are beginning to find themselves in, into Dominica society and the act or its regulation should include provisions placing a mandatory duty on police to urgently follow up such reports so that blood and urine samples may be drawn. However, as was earlier observed by Mr. Favory, none of the recommendations of the DPPA consultation workshop held in 1997 on the then pending Sexual Offenses Act was included in the final draft. And possibly, because of this, most practitioners think that there is a need to review this legislation to bring it up to speed. In this regard, the DPPA's favory has some ideas for amendments in any future revision of this act. What we realize is that um, this act is really based on uh, the old British law to, to a great extent. And Britain and other countries in Europe have moved more progressively to making changes that respond to the current situation, uh, the modern situation in their countries and we are still stuck in the past, so to speak. Um, for example, we have um, the issue of um, abortion. Now, we know that in our culture, um, people abhor the act of abortion, um, but it is felt by a number of people that um, there is need to at least liberalize the law to some extent. For example, in cases where a woman is raped or in the case of incest, there is a strong feeling in this modern society that a woman should have the option to determine whether she would like to carry an offspring of a person who has raped her. That should be her right to decide. Um, there are different views about it. So uh, I, I, we, in some countries in the Caribbean, of course, that has occurred. It is not a question of um, uh, abortion on demand, but in certain traumatic situations where a woman is traumatized by uh, a, a rapist, for example, we feel that there should be um, consideration for a woman to be counseled and she could get a safe abortion if she so desires she doesn't want to carry the child of, uh, of, of a rapist. In cases of, of incest, for example, where we have fathers abusing their daughters, if it happens that uh, a woman is, is got pregnant by her father, shouldn't that woman you know, decide whether she would want to continue to, to bear this child. I mean, there are medical implications of that situation as well. So I think um, with the proper counseling, um, a woman should be free to make a choice as to whether she wants to carry a baby out of those circumstances to term. 